Part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. We come up with, no, he won't, more than, yes, I, yes, he will. And if you, if you were to sit right, right in front of God, you're like, no, you won't. He says, yes, I will. Yeah, but you don't know how bad I've been. He said, yes, I do. And you still going to do it? I will. And you still going to make a way? I will. But well, Lord, did you see me last night? Yeah, you was drunk as a skunk. I will. 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 Don't you know that will change you? You can't sit under all these I wills and stay the same. The Mentality Men's Conference is back. On September 8th through 9th, we are breaking free from the world's definition of manhood and embracing the men God created us to be. Join men from all over the world for the 2023 Mentality Men's Conference. You don't want to miss this free conference. Text MENTALITY to 51555, scan the QR code on your screen, or visit creflodollarministries.org and register now. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. Before the cross, God was distant and unapproachable to the people. Exodus 19 and 12. Before the cross, God was distant and unapproachable to the people. Exodus 19, 12 says, And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you go not up into the mount or touch the border of it, and whosoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death. I, I would have to say that's unapproachable. <laughs> But that changed. After the cross, we have, been, we have been brought near to God. Ephesians 2, 13 and 14. Ephesians 2, 13 and 14. After the cross, we have been brought near to God. And he says this, but now in Christ Jesus. In who? In Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh or brought near. How? By the blood of Christ. Verse 14, for he is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. We are now brought near to God by the blood of Jesus. He is no longer unapproachable. You don't need a preach to come in, on, a, a priest to come in on your behalf. You don't need a Melchizedek to show up and stand between you and God. He is no longer, he's removed that whole deal of him being unapproachable. You can come boldly to the throne of God and ask for help in a time of trouble. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4, 16. Hebrews chapter 4, 16. This is after the cross. He is, he is not unapproachable anymore. You can approach God. God receives you. And that's what I just read. He, Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain what? Mercy. Mercy is what you don't deserve. You get it anyway. And he says, and you'll find grace to help you in a time of need. That's, that's, hu that's humility right now. I humble myself to come boldly with liberty, like I know I got a right to, to come to the throne of grace. And I am no longer dealing with a God who is unapproachable. Amen. Number three. <clears throat> Before the cross, under the law, God held man responsible for his sins. Leviticus 5:17. Before the cross, under the law, God held man responsible for his sins. Um, now, in, Le in, in Leviticus 5:17, he says, "And if a soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandment of the Lord, though he wist it not." yet is he guilty and shall bear his iniquity. He held mankind responsible for his sin. And, and, and somehow there are churches that are still holding 
people responsible for their sins. And, um, and so what happens? You develop a sin conscious. Hebrews 9 and 9, you develop a sin conscious. Somebody says, how do I know if I have a sin conscious? Well, it'll be pretty evident if you get up in the morning and start asking God to forgive you for the sin you hadn't committed yet. That's your sin conscious. And if you are sin conscious and not righteousness conscious, what Jesus has done for you, you're, you're not taking it and, 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 and holding it. Look at verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining, perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Perfect, not, see, we're looking at perfect as you're being uh, uh, completely in perfection where not sinning is concerned, but he says, no, we, we, what Jesus did it made you perfect as pertaining to the conscious. You should no longer have a sin conscious, but you now should walk with a mature consciousness of righteousness. And when you do that, you begin to see all kinds of things change because when stuff happens, and you can still declare, I am still the righteousness of God, you are now more conscious of your righteousness and less, way less conscious of, of the sin in your life. And so what happens, what happens when you have a church filled with people who are sin conscious? Well, you know, the elephant in the room is they're sinning all the time <laughs> because when you're sin conscious, that's basically what you're going to do. But we have to take hold of the, of the righteousness of God conscious. So that's what it was before the cross. You were held responsible for your sins, and you walked in that sin consciousness. But after the cross, we have redemption and forgiveness of sins by the blood of Jesus. We are cleansed of all of our sins. We are free, we're free from a guilty conscience because God remembers our sins no more. We're free from that. We're free from that. Hebrews 8 and 12. We are free from a guilty conscience. And, and, and see, if, you, if you're still in shame and, 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 and guilt and uh, all those kind of things, you, you got to ask, man, I, I, maybe I'm not, I don't have confidence in this, in this righteousness which is of God. Things have changed. Look what he said in verse 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins, this is big, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. God doesn't remember it. You're the only one that still remembers it. The only thing that exists of your sins is in your memory. <laughs> and you're going to have to, un look at what he said. I received that. Say it, I received that, man. All my sins and my iniquities, I, I remember. He doesn't remember it anymore, so I shouldn't remember it anymore. And you got to get away from that sin. Look at, uh, let me see, in the NLT, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28 in the NLT. I, th I think that's one. Yeah. He says, so also Christ was offered once for all time. How many times was Christ offered? So he's not hanging up. You know, every time you sin, hanging up on the cross every time you sin. If he's going to do that, he might as well just stay on the cross. All right? Uh, so also Christ was offered once for all times as a sacrifice to take away sins of many people, to take away sins of many people. He will come again, watch this, not to deal with our sins. So if he's coming again, but not to deal with our sins, the question would be, why is he not coming to deal with our sins? He's already dealt with them, right? Why are you still dealing with them? He's already dealt with our sins. He says, I'm coming in not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly waiting for him. Boy, I tell you what, man, this is, this is what we get after the cross, man. All right, number four. Before the cross, it was thou shalt not. I ain't even got to show you no scripture on that. You can just flip your Bible and see that. Before the cross, it was thou shalt not this, and thou shalt not that, and thou shalt not that. And we're still hearing thou shalt not. We come to church and hear thou shalt not. And, and we hear from brothers and sisters, thou shalt not. And it's like, whoa. We, that was, before the cross, it was thou shalt not. After the cross, it was I will, I will, I will, I will. <laughs> that, let's look at Hebrews chapter 8, 
verses 8 through 12. What you talking about? I will, I will, I will. You, dude, you got to understand, God's not looking for a way to quote, thou shalt not to you. God is looking for a way to say, I ain't, if, if you are born again, I will, I will, I will. See, we're still trying to find reasons for it not happening and, saying, and you want to put it on God like he won't. God says, no, I will. I will answer your prayer. I will heal you. I will deliver you. I will promote you. I will take care of you. I will take care of this situation. I will take care of that situation. I will change that. I will do that. Is there anything else I can do for you? Under the old covenant, we served him. Oh, this is strange. Under the new covenant, he serves us. That freaks people out. What? But that's what, I will. Yes, I will. We come up with, no, he won't, more than, yes, I, yes, he will. And if you, if you were to could sit right, right in front of God, you're like, no, you won't. He says, yes, I will. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know how bad I've been. He said, yes, I do. <laughs> and you're still going to do it? I will. <laughs> and you're still going to make a way? I will. Well, Lord, did you see me last night? Yeah, you was drunk as a skunk. I will. <laughs> I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. Don't you know that will change you? You can't sit under all these I wills and stay the same. Because his goodness now is, is changing you. You're, it's like there's something that happens when you know you don't deserve it and you still hear I will. You know you don't deserve it, and you, I will, I will. Yes, I will. And then you're walking with something that he will to do, knowing you don't deserve it. Come on, man, that break you down. It takes every taste of mad dog 2020, acting like a fool. It take all that away because you're like, I serve a God who says, I will. Look at this, Hebrews 8, 8 through 12, he says, uh, let's look at this in the NLT. I, I go to NLT a lot because, man, I ain't trying to, I I'm trying to make it as simple for you to comprehend as I possibly can. He says, but when God found fault with the people, he said, the day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make, watch this, a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. The new has come. A new covenant, which makes the other one old. He says, this covenant will not be like the one I made with, your, with their ancestors. Now, now he's comparing. He says, when I took them by the hand and led them out of, out of the land of Egypt, he said, they did not remain faithful to my covenant, so I turned my back on them, says the Lord. Not because I was trying to be mean. Watch this. But this, but this is the new covenant I will make. See, th that old covenant was, you know, when you miss the mark, then I could not because of the covenant. When you didn't do what you were supposed to do, then I could not. His love, glory, was still restrained, restricted. And when Jesus died on that cross, he provided what was necessary to remove the restrictions from his love. And today, under this new covenant, he loves us with no restrictions. Your crazy can't stop his love. He, he won't turn his back on you no matter what because he has a better covenant to love you with no restraints or no restrictions. Hallelujah. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel. On that day, saith the Lord, I will put my laws, watch this, in their minds, and I will write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and I will. You see all those I wills? And they will be my people, praise God. Verse 11, he says, and they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor would they need to teach their relatives, saying, you should know the Lord. For everyone from the least to the great, greatest will know me already. See, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. In this new covenant, the Holy Ghost is working when you not. Some of us think that God actually needs us in order for him to be successful in changing somebody. And I need to tell you that God doesn't need you to change somebody. He will change anybody he wants to change. In fact, there are people right now that he is working on probably better because you out of the way, and now he can, he can, he can do something with them. 
You're too high strung, bro. God, God doesn't need you to be who he is. He's been changing people all by himself for generations. People can go to bed hellions and wake up talking in tongues and don't even know what's going on. And I tell you, God is changing your unsaved relatives right now. God is changing your hellacious friends right now. God is changing some things around you, and you'll not be able to boast about it because it wasn't your word and it wasn't anything you did, but God just showed up one day in his mercy and in his grace because he knew it concerns you, and he wanted to perfect everything that concerns you, and he changed your children, and he changed your, your relatives, and he changed those situations all by himself. Well, now I'm God's hands and feet. Yeah, he would like that, but please understand, there's a lot of people who would, would not loan him the, his hand, their hands and their feet. God still know how to change folks. Somebody said, how do I know? Because he's changing me. That stuff's still working on the inside of me. That stuff I still can't figure out what's going on. Ain't the type that go to crying in front of people while I'm preaching. I, I just can't help it sometimes. Man, Pastor Dick, I was teaching, teaching that word last night. Men have just sitting there just crying. Why? Oh, my God, he's so weak. Oh, Lord, here I go again. <laughs> he's so good. Who, who is like unto thee, O oh God? Who can heal like he can heal? Who can deliver like he can deliver? I done looked everywhere, and I still can't find nobody who can do it like he can do it. Hey, glory to God, I can't find nobody. And, and he's good. And then peace is born out of that. And now you walking around with peace trying to figure out how you got peace. I tell you how, because it ain't your peace. It's his peace, my peace, I leave you. Not the peace you can get from the world, because they peace ain't even peace no more. Glory to God. Harabasha, talarabasha. Calm down, boy. Time. Yeah, come on, come on. You got it. Hey, 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 hey. Kiri asha dalabasha, baba. Yes. I will, I will, I will. I will. I will, I will save your, I will save your mate. I, I will save your children. I, I, I will promote you. I will anoint you. I will use you. I will carry out what I promised on you. I will, I will. I will, I will, I will. I will. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Hey, yes, I will. I will. We serve an I will God, not a thou shalt not God. We have a better covenant with better promises. And I don't want to mix that with that. I don't want to mix I will, but thou shalt not. It's not I will mixed with thou shalt not. It's I will, I will. Under this new covenant, I will, I will. Under that old covenant, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. You touch that mountain, I'm gonna get you, thou shalt not. No. I, 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 can't, I can't even receive that no more. Somebody getting up telling me, these seven, do these seven things, and then God will rewards you. That's not in line with the new covenant of grace. God's trying to show you, this is me now. Y'all had y'all chance. It was raggedy, messy, and I'm done with that. I ain't got time. I'm on a schedule right now. I'm on a schedule right now.
All I want from you is to believe in the one I sent. Boy, the Lord got to help me, man. I, 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 that messed me up right there, boy, you understand? Here's what got me. First of all, <laughs> I have a God. No, that's it. I got a God. Somebody said, which one you got? The only one. The one that sits high and looks low. <laughs> All right, y'all, stop, 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 stop. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. Number five. Number five. Number five. Very bad show, Kukala Basa. Cool. Mm. I feel like we're in that, in that Saturday morning prayer at 10 o'clock. What we used to do, yeah. Number five, before the cross, righteousness was demanded of a sinful and fallen man. Before the cross, righteousness was demanded. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 25. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 25, righteousness was demanded of a sinful and a fallen man. Think about that. Demanding righteousness from a sinful and a fallen man. Look what he says, for we will be counted as righteous when? When we obey all the commandments the Lord our God has given us. Okay, see, if you don't, if you don't, not, if you don't divide, the, rightly divide the truth from what, before the cross and under the cross, you'll take that scripture and, and say, my Bible tells me that you got to obey the commands in order to be righteous. So y'all, that great stuff ain't work, because that's what the Bible say. Yes, that's correct under the old covenant before Jesus died. And it wasn't successful because a fallen man could never achieve righteousness in his own works. And all you got to do is say to the preacher, preacher, do you do Deuteronomy 625? Oh, yes, I am. Okay, you just told me you, what you're doing for real because you can't do that. Can't nobody do that. But under the new covenant, after the cross, Righteousness as a free gift is given to everyone that's in Christ. Romans 5, 17. Under, un, un, under the, this new covenant, we've got righteousness as a gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. If, if, it's, if it has to be earned, as we just read, it's not a gift. It's not a gift. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Number six, before the cross, Adam's sin meant condemnation for all men. Before the cross, Adam's sin meant condemnation for all men. That's, you can see that Romans 5 and 18 where he clearly states about, uh, yes, Adam's one sin brought condemnation for everyone. But then after the cross, it was Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So before the cross, it was condemnation. After the cross, no condemnation who are in Christ Jesus. Do you feel like you're just working the mechanics of Christianity? Do you want to know what it means to really know Jesus? In his series, The Essence of Grace, Creflo Dollar reveals the person and mission of grace in the life of believers. Grace ministers righteousness right here. Grace ministers redemption here. Grace ministers everything that your old 
old man lacked, your new man has, and the grace of God is the nourishment for everything you're going to need in life. And that's why he said, I shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. Order this three-message series today for a gift of 20 U.S. dollars or more for CDs or 30 U.S. dollars or more for DVDs. Simply call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit creflodollarministries.org and click eStore today. Have you accepted your invitation to Grace Life Homecoming? Meet Creflo and Taffy Dollar at the World Dome, July 13th through 15th in College Park, Georgia. Three power-packed days filled with understanding, revelation, worship, and fellowship. You know the lineup. Clarence McClendon, Gregory Dickow, Michael Smith, Mimi Haddad, and special musical guests Ty Tribbett, William Murphy, and just added to the lineup is J.J. Hairston. There's something for everyone. Sessions for men, women, and ministers plus our life-changing team conferences backed by popular demand you don't want to miss this in-person only celebration register for free now 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 by texting grace life to 51555 scanning the qr code on your screen visiting www.worldchangers.org or dialing 866-477-7683 see you july 13th through 15th in college park georgia the 2020 Vision Partner Program at Creflo Dollar Ministries is more than a program. It's a relationship designed to make a high impact in your life, our lives, and the lives of millions around the world. Text 2020 Partner to 51555 to become a 2020 Vision Partner today. No matter where you are on your personal journey, the Word of God can reach you. Tune in to World Changers every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have you ever had God save somebody in your family and you they, they were no good for nothing dirty, but He saved them anyway, sanctified them, filled them with the Holy Ghost? Text watch now to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about services and stream times. I open my heart, I open my mind, I open myself up to God possibilities, to God happenings, God encounters, whatever He wants to do, however He wants to do it, but I refuse to live in the past. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are world changers. See you online.